Somalia-based militant group, the Al-Shabaab, began working hard in 2007 to give itself an international profile as a liberation group. That task was not going to be easy, but there was something to give it mileage. The presence of African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM. This meant the group could, in their view, justifiably take their war across the Somalia borders to the countries that had deployed forces in Somalia. The original aim of the previously small scruffy group was to destabilize and topple the transitional federal government of Somalia. Uganda was singled out among the two troop deploying countries then, the other being Burundi. The group had warned these countries many times that they would pay the price for frustrating the Al Shabaab mission. Before the Kampala bombings, Al Shabaab was desperately seeking recognition from the top leadership of the global terror network, the Al Qaeda. To prove that they could make good on their threats, the Al Shabaab planned to hit Kampala with basically two motives. One, to make it untenable for Uganda to continue with the Somalia mission, and secondly, according to terrorism analysts, to prove to international terror groups that Al Shabaab was formidable in East Africa and could deliver the terror network's objectives in the region. The Sunday night of 11th July 2010 probably provided the worst surprise ever for Uganda's security agencies and civilians. As soccer lovers enjoyed the World Cup final game between Spain and Netherlands, terrorists felt they would make a big point and cause maximum damage by hitting such a gathering. At the Chad Dondo rugby ground in Lugogo, Kampala, shortly after the second half of the game kicked off at about 10.30 p.m., the first bomb went off. Before many could make sense of the blast, a cacophony of wailing followed as another blast went off. Police investigations later established that a suicide bomber blew himself up in the first blast, while the second one was triggered off by Idris in Subuga, according to his extrajudicial statement. In just seconds, 61 people lost their lives in Lugogo. Well, I can't say uh, at this stage the nationalities of those who the casualties. So if you could just bear with us as soon as you have established, uh, I don't want to speculate. It injured most people. Other people died. Like my sister got an injury here, fragment burnt her. Then even my cousin got an injury here. Almost simultaneously, another bomb went off about a mile away at Ethiopian Village Restaurant, a hangout popular with expatriates in Kabalagala on the outskirts of Kampala. Fifteen people died. I have to treat Those myself. Guys, I have to go to hospital. Which hospital? International. Okay. My brother. Bodies and scattered pieces of human flesh filled the two scenes. Survivors in pain and state of confusion were rushed to nearby hospitals and health facilities. Relatives of the victims rushed to hospitals as news spread on radio and television about the terror attack. All my friends are dead! <laughs> The staff at hospital wards and mortuaries had long hours that night and in the days that followed. A total of 76 people were reported dead and 85 seriously injured, while several others were treated for minor injuries. President Museveni visited the scenes of terror on 12th July and re echoed his stand on terrorism. Uganda was not about to give up. And we shall go for them wherever they are coming from. Police reconstructed the scenes and the faces of the two unclean bodies. They announced later that the two bodies of the suicide bombers who blew themselves up. One suicide vest failed to go for Machindi, otherwise more people would have died. Investigations began immediately and more than 60 people were arrested. After saving, again and again, 13 suspects arrested from Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania were detained and charged with counts of murder and attempted murder. One of the accused, Idris Nsubuga, pleaded guilty in 2011 and he was handed a custodial sentence of 25 years. He later became a state witness. Government later paid out 5 million shillings to the relatives of the deceased, while the injured received 3 million shillings. But reports later emerged in Parliament that the office of the Prime Minister that handled the money could not account for 205 million out of 794 million shillings that was allocated for the compensation. Frank Walisembi, NTV.